On the afternoon of February the 14th, 1945, Charles Walton, a 74-year-old farm labourer, is brutally attacked and murdered, pinned to the ground with his own pitchfork, his throat slashed. The work of a deranged escape prisoner, a local farmer with an axe to grind, all a ritualistic killing. I'm Cat Park. Join me with your favourite tipple as we unfold the details of this grisly and brutal case of Charles Walton Unsolved in the Murder and Wine Club. Alfred Potter remains the prime suspect in Charles's murder, but Fabian and his team cannot find enough credible evidence to convict him. The shocking truth to this case is there are so many people within the vicinity of the murder scene, but disturbingly, not one person heard or saw anything. No one heard Charles's cry as the attacker pounded and stabbed his body. No one will admit to seeing anyone walking to and from the scene. As part of the ongoing investigation, with the hope of discovering that one piece of evidence will move the case forward, the police interview residents of the dwellings close to where Charles has been murdered. The nearest dwelling to where Charles's body was found is a cottage 300 yards away. Its occupants are a 33-year-old woman and her 59-year-old lodger. The woman has been working as a housekeeper in Upper Quinton and on the day of the murder had been working there until 12.15pm. She had then called in on her aunt in Upper Quinton and returned to the cottage to prepare lunch for herself and her lodger. Her lodger is employed at the printing works where Edith, Charles's daughter, works. He returned to the cottage at 1.08pm and stayed with his landlady until 2pm. Both left the house together. Neither saw anyone pass the cottage or the fields nearby and heard nothing unusual whilst they were in the cottage. Another dwelling that had a clear view of the field where Charles was murdered was a caravan occupied by a flight lieutenant and his wife. Just before he left to go on duty at Long Marston's aerodrome, the flight lieutenant sees Charles pass his caravan at about 8.30am. He is away all day and returns at 5.30pm. His wife remained in the van all day and tells detectives that she did not see anyone in the field at any time after seeing Charles walk past. His wife tells the police their baby had been particularly unsettled that day and she had been consumed with their child. Someone possibly could have passed the van without her knowing. She couldn't be sure. Potter, interestingly, had said he'd gone to the field adjacent to where Charles was murdered at 12.20pm, but he was not seen by the wife, even though he would have had to have passed quite close to the van. Within a few months, the inquiry starts to lose momentum, and despite using the latest police and scientific methods of its time, Without a motive or any key witnesses, the case goes cold. There is, however, one more line of inquiry that the police can take. But it is one that they are unwilling to publicly investigate. When Charles was found, it was noted that his trousers and shirt were undone. And it was considered that they might have been undone by his murderer looking for a money belt as it was thought he had money. The police report noted that if robbery was the motive, the murderer was likely to have been a person with local knowledge. There was also another, more sinister explanation. Rumours started to circulate that when Charles's body was discovered, a cross had been engraved on his chest. Walton was considered by some locals to have connections with local superstitions folklore and the supernatural. Some believed he was a witch whose powers were feared by some villagers. 
It was claimed he could cast the evil eye and kept natterjack toads as pets and used them to destroy the crops and livestock of local farmers. Two examples cited were the failure of the 1944 harvest and the death of Potter's calf on the 13th of February. It was claimed that this alleged witchcraft had led him to be murdered in a ritualistic manner which involved his blood soaking into the ground to replenish the soil's fertility. It was said that throughout the investigation, strange things had happened, including apparitions, strange dogs being seen, and dogs and livestock being found dead. It was claimed that soon after Walton's murder, a black dog was found hanging from a tree close to the murder scene. Added to this conspiracy, similarities were drawn to the murder that took place in September 1875, only a few miles away from Upper and Lower Quinton, where a woman was murdered in the same way as Walton. Anne Tennant, aged 79, was stabbed to death without warning by a local farmhand, James Haywood, using a pitchfork. He stabbed her in the legs and head. Haywood claimed that Anne was a witch, and that there were other witches in the village whom he intended to deal with in the same way. Although committed to trial for murder, he was found not guilty on the grounds of insanity and spent the rest of his life in Broadmoor Criminal Lunatics Asylum. Nine years after the murder of Walton, the Daily Mirror revisit the killing of Anne Tennant and alleged similarities between that event and Walton's murder. The investigative journalist reports that the police have found one other link between the two killings, but pledged not to reveal it. Despite the circumstantial evidence weighted against Potter, there is no physical evidence linking him to the crime, nor any witnesses. There is also no evidence that Potter is capable of such violence, nor that there was a quarrel between the two men. Add in a village that remains tight-lipped, the case goes cold. Reluctantly, Fabian and Webb return to London. It seems that Britain's most prolific detective has finally been beaten by Charles Walton's murder. It is a case that becomes a personal obsession for Spooner, part of the original police team, long after the world has lost interest and the files have begun to gather dust. He becomes a familiar face about the village, often arriving unexpectedly to spook the killer. He is convinced by the ritualistic angle, believing that the answer lies in Lower Quinton and that a local man must have been responsible. The DSI returns every year to climb Meon Hill and walks around the village, hoping to spot some overlooked clues missed during the initial investigation. The official inquest into Walton's death gives the cause of death as murder by person or persons unknown. Charles is buried in the churchyard at Lower Quinton, but years later, due to crowds of people descending onto Lower Quinton, a family member removes his headstone. Today, there is no trace of Charles Walton, or the events of February the 14th, 1945. Due to the notoriety of the case, many amateur sleuths have visited Lower Quinton to see if they can crack the case that Fabian could not. Everyone who visits the village, even today, is met with the same wall of silence the police were met with all those years ago. Even the modern-day villagers want to keep the secret behind Charles' death under lock and key. Fabian many years later commented that Alfred Potter probably did commit the murder, and that the villagers knew the reasons behind the killing. Alfred Potter died in 1961, taking whatever secrets he had to the grave. One more strange occurrence happened in August 1960. The outhouses behind the cottage rented by Walton were being demolished. One workman discovered an old tin pocket watch 
It was later identified as Walton's. Inside the watch, a piece of coloured glass was found. Walton never let this watch out of his possession. Villagers revealed that the glass found was witch glass, used to absorb or deflect evil thoughts aimed at its owner. Police revealed that during the early days of the investigation, they searched the same place and found nothing. It appears that the killer returned later to deposit the watch. Why had the murderer felt it necessary to take such a large risk in returning the watch when they could have easily have disposed of it by other means? The murder of Charles Walton remains open to this day and is considered to be Warwickshire Police's oldest ongoing investigation. I would love to know your thoughts on the mysterious case. This is the last episode of Charles Walton Unsolved. If you like our show, please give us a five-star rating and review and remember to tell your friends. Thank you so much for supporting the Murder and Wine Club podcast. We really do appreciate it. You can listen to all future episodes right now before anyone else by joining the Murder and Wine Club Access All Area membership. You'll not only get early episode access, but you'll also have access to our monthly psychic detective sessions with one of our resident psychic mediums, plus bonus episodes and behind the scene access. Head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash murder and wine and join today. The link is in the episode notes. Subscribe on Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, Spotify, or whatever you are listening on right now. Thank you.